Greetings and salutations. So we are going to look at the last question for the 2019 Dev1 mechanics paper today. So let's get into it. So like always, I've uh, put the physics equation sheet on top, and obviously you don't get this. Um, you don't get given this particular equation sheet for every single page of the exam booklet. This will only be in the first page of your exam or on the resource sheet. Um, so. I put it here because I can, so I can refer to you what particular uh, which particular equation we are going to use for this particular concept. So for this particular question, you need to look at the the idea of a parachutist um, with a total mass of sixty three kilograms. So that's important. So let's highlight these now. So sixty three kilograms show that the person is 3,500 meters um, above ground and then that is the answer so same as what I told you before in the previous two video when they say show the answer the answer is given to you you just need to calculate to prove that the answer is what they told you so this is to do with gravitational potential energy so you need to use the equation of EP equals mgh so EP equals mg delta h and we just look for numbers. So what, what is the mass of the person? 63 kilograms. What is G? G is 10. Magic number of 10 newtons per kilogram, just 10. Well, I just tell people, just memorize and memorize. Uh, me remember the magic number in physics, 10. Um, and the height of 3500, and then you should get 2205000 joules of the answer and this guys is a merit question believe it or not um, so very straightforward substitute numbers you get a merit um, sounds pr like a pretty good deal to me next question shall we so we're gonna look at next one this parachute is forced a distance of 440 450 meters during the first 9.49 seconds calculate the average speed oh this is looks like an achieved question so you are looking at speed which is V you got distance which is 450 meters, you got 9.49 seconds, which is time. So which equation has VDT in it, which is the very first one. So V equals D divided by change of distance divided by change of time. So just be 450 divided by 9.49 seconds, and you should get 47.4 meters per second achieved, done. Let's move on. Um, question C, now this is a really interesting question. Um, explain the vertical motion of the parachute immediately after jump immediately let's get rid of the line immediately after jumping out so that's before the parachute opens describe the vertical motion and describe the net force and state the force as either balance or unbalance show the how the net vertical force affect the vertical motion so they remember that we're explaining the vertical motion so this particular question now i'll do a little bit more and i won't um, write too much and won't draw too much and so you just have to bear me i just have to listen to me explain to um, explain this question so think about if you um a lot of you probably too young or never skydived i have i think i've done fifteen thousand feet which is the highest you can get in um, the commercial um, skydiving in new zealand so if you've ever you know think about being on a plane when you're on the plane, just before you're jumping out, before you're jumping out, you're on the plane. You're not really moving. You're moving with the plane. Okay, so technically, if the plane's going at a constant speed, you are going at a constant speed. Okay, you're going with the plane, or you're considered stationary. Okay, so it's all relative. Let's not go into there. But if you immediately jumped out before the parachute opened, so you are just accelerating downwards. Okay, so you're just free falling from the top of the uh, from you know up in the sky, you will be accelerating. Okay, because you would have no or very little air resistance that's holding you back right at the beginning. So it's kind of like if I draw different stages. If you like, say if you oops, uh, that's not a, I don't want a highlighter. So if you just jumped out, just jumped out, like say this is you, you know wondering why you pay so much money to go through this um, at the beginning you have a lot of gravity force or weight force okay so you have lots of weight force or gravity force we kind of accept these and then you have very little friction or air resistance or air resistance okay so in this case air resistance is probably a more suitable 
uh, suitable idea it's not support okay don't always remember don't just go um, a lot of people just understand uh, just remember downward is weight upward is um, what do you call it is support um, there's nothing supporting you mid-air, okay? If there's something supporting you, you wouldn't be falling down. It is air resistance. So just be when you, you know, when we look at this particular question, you are falling, you are falling down, you're free falling, you have very little air resist resistance, you have a very unbalanced net force. The weight force is going to be a lot higher than the force of re air resistance so as a result the force is unbalanced and you as a result will accelerate so what does it mean to have an unbalanced force you accelerate to this the direction of the of the net force which is in this case down free falling down so that's pretty much answers this question, but I want to do a little bit more. I mean, that's why you're here. You're not just here to, I mean, you can read the answers on the online. You don't have, you know, why you're here to listen to me? Because I, I like to do a little bit more. So if I, if, if, if you think about, if we, if you, if you go back to the airplane, you know, if you go back to the parachute, so this is the first stage, you know, if you're skydiving and you're free falling, so your weight falls significantly higher, then all of this stuff happens, you accelerate down. Now, second stage, now this is not part of the um, exam anymore. Um, let's just do a little bit more, let's do use a black pen. So second stage, so that's when you have um, the weight force is balanced by air resistance. So that means you've been free falling for a little while and suffered for a little while or you know getting the adrenaline over your body for you know getting that pump all pumped up very excited very scary um, sort of experience but if you free forward for a while you will reach what we call terminal velocity so that's when your weight force equals the friction force or air resistance i should use air resistance that's better so you are you have reached constant speed which the is the idea of terminal velocity. Now, what that means, um, guys, is that you are going to constant speed because these two forces are the same. So the net force will be balanced, okay? Now, stage three, you can't free fall for too long, otherwise you would end up on the news for, um, for not opening up your parachute too soon, and then you may not have survived the free fall. So what you would have done, you open the parachute and then that the, the air resistance, or in this case, the drag, or you can say the support in a way, is because you're kind of supported by the, by the parachute, but in this case, air resistance and drag will be more, still be more appropriate, is going to be greater than your weight force. So your weight force is going to be less than the air resistance force. So again, the force is now unbalanced, and you will decelerate. So this is where the part of the skydiving journey becomes rather pleasant. You know, you get a really nice view and you slow down, you just glide down. And so the moment you open up the parachute, you will, you, you'll know what I mean when you go skydiving or if you have skydive, you just feel like you're being pulled right up because you're slowing down really quickly because of the extra air resistance that the parachute is able to support you. Now, if you keep slide, if you keep gliding down, then we will reach a stage four. This is where your um, parachute has opened up for a little while. You will just keep going at a constant speed. So this is where your air resistance force or the support or drag force and the weight force, just forgot the T here, would actually be the same. So you will have a pleasant ride down um, to the bottom and you'll land safely. And you would have wondered why you spent so much money doing this whole thing. But it's one of the things you do once and you will never do it again. Or unless, you know, if you're really passionate about it, you can um, do more. And um, it's definitely a very, very um, um, unforgettable experience. Okay, so I've done a lot more than you will need for this particular exam. But like I said, yes, you understood this question. But next, like say in 2020, what if they decided to ask you about this stage. What if in next year, if you're watching this video in 2021, what if they ask you a question on this? Okay, so it's really important that you understand 
um, the motion is all decided by the um, by the forces acting on the object. If the forces are balanced, you will not. You will either be stationary or go at a constant speed. Or they are unbalanced, then you will be accelerating to the direction of the net force. So this particular exam didn't have too much on work. They have a lot of questions on on um, what we call forces and motion. So if you um, I would strongly recommend you guys, if you have time, you know, before the end of your exams, do the 2018 exam because that one is quite heavily focused on work. And if you do both, I'll go through that exam paper as well, I promise. Um, and then you will find a balance between the knowledge of work and force. Okay, so this is a very important excellence question, hence I spent that much um, that's that much amount of time. But you can see this is what you can find on the marking schedule. Um, so the force is acting down its weight, and air resistance going up, the forces are balanced because it's greater, so you accelerate the wet net force in the direction of the net uh, of the net force which is going down, therefore you accelerate downwards. Okay, so I did a lot more than I would I would, but um, you know, you're here to be we learn to understand. We don't necessarily learn just to pass exams. Okay, so that's what that's not what education is about. Um, you can be pragmatic sometimes, but at the end of the day, the fundamental idea of education is that you are interested and understand why we're learning this. Okay, so last part. This is D. During the 400, um, 450 meters fall, the gravitational potential energy was reduced by two a three five zero zero joules of energy. Calculate the parachutist downward speed assuming energy is conserved. So assuming energy is conserved, this is a very, very popular question when you see this. When you see that line, that means all of your EK or EP is converted to EK. So I, when I teach this, I mean, you can do this right now if you want, maybe grab a pin. Um, or grab something that you don't mind dropping. So hold it up high, let's say a couple of meters up high, and then let go. And then you should be able to see your pen starting to accelerate, reaches a very high speed, then bang, it lands on the floor. Then you can hear the whatever the thing you dropped landing on the floor because not all of the EP is converted to EK realistically. We have to assume that energy is conserved because it doesn't happen in real life. So some of the energy will always be lost as heat or sound due to friction and you never get all the EP to EK. So the speed that we are calculating is actually what we call the theoretical speed. It's never going to be this fast. It will be slower in real life because some of the EP will be gone to other forms of energy. So that will normally be an excellent question, um, hence it's, but it's not asked here. So let's just do the calculation. But again, it's important to know that idea. So EP equals EK. This is what we assume. We assume EP equals oops, EP equals EP. Obviously, that's true. Um, we assume EP equals EK, and what is EK? Reduced by two eight three five zero. So that means you lost E two eight three five zero joules of energy as EP. You lost so so that two eight three five zero of EP. Is converted, is converted to two eight three five zero zero of E K, assuming energy is conserved. So E K is now two eight three five zero zero joule uh, kilojoules. Okay, so that's why we need to. Oh, why am I talking about kilojoules? I'm talking, I'm, getting into my chemistry head um, because we use ki uh, kilojoules in, in chem, not, uh, not joules. So 28350 joules. So how do we calculate EK? Here's EK. EK equals half mv squared. So what's EK? EK is the number right in front of us, um, right above the equation. Half is just half. How heavy is a parachute? I actually forgotten. Let's go up. Let's go up. Uh, where is? Oh, there it is. So you have to go all the way up to question one, uh, question three a, to find 
this particular section okay so it's as you can see it's not it's not the nicest way to um, to test your knowledge but um, you have to understand you have to get your number from everywhere in the questions okay so that would be 63 kilograms and then V don't forget the squared okay so if I rearrange this V squared will equal to 283500 times by 2 and then divide by 63 that is just making the v2 the subject you can just multiply these two numbers which gives you 31.5 and then use that number divided by 31.5 but then okay it doesn't really matter so what do we do after that we will just we should get v squared equal to um if i quickly punch these numbers in my calculator 283500 times 2 divided by 63 oh i got a nice number which is 9000 now v will equal to the square root of 9000 and that's going to give you 95 um, meters per second because you are calculating the speed this is an excellent um, calculation so um, make sure you can do these and again you don't need to be able to do all of these for achieved if you just if you're struggling this year um, with mechanics even even with the marking schedule um, if you write EP equals EK in this case you get one achieve tick and if you put the right equation without even using the right number if you use this you get another achieve tick and how many achieve ticks do you need to pass out of the entire examination out of the exam out of the physics examination you're guaranteed to pass with nine points so you already got two by writing ep equals ek and ek equals half mv squared guys and that's already been given to you so have a bit of confidence i know a lot of people struggle with physics because of the mathematical components but again um, we try to um, examine you on the on your scientific knowledge not so much on your mathematics skills okay so hopefully the three past three sections have been helpful to help you do better in the you know if you have if you haven't done your school exams hopefully you can get a better grade for your school exams and definitely um, hopefully this made a difference to make you achieve in um, achieve it with the high results in the end of year examinations okay so like always if you found the videos helpful and um, informative please pass it on to your friends subscribe leave a like that will really help the channel grow and that will reach more students in the country and, and more people will benefit okay because i'm already i've already recorded i've already done the work you um you know it will make me really um, proud if this has if this makes a you know bigger impact to our students um, this year okay um, otherwise this is me for this particular video uh, take care study hard goodbye